Dusk has hit the coast of Florida as we are here live at the Pensacola Super Speedway getting ready to set the starting grid for race number seven of Division Two of the Skittles Super Speedway Series. If you didn't tune in to our Division One qualifying session, then uh, let me give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect here from this qualifying session. These drivers, single car speed can go upwards of 220 to 225 miles per hour. They hit the 230 to 235 mark in the draft. It is a very fast super speedway, but you're gonna have to have a really fast lap time to get the pole position. Just to give you an idea, around one of division one, the top two speeds were separated by only three thousandths of a second. As we look here at the 20 of Alex Benyako, he's going to be the first car on track. Uh, I said this in the Division 1 qualifying session, but for those of you that didn't tune into that, I just hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend, depending on how long your vacation was from school, depending on what level of uh, school you are at. Uh, I had a whole week off, really enjoyed it, and uh, unfortunately we didn't have any skill Super Speedway Series races during the weekend, but just hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving, and now it's time to get back into the swing of things here as we have just about reached the halfway point of the regular season. When we get to the halfway point of next week's race, in both Division One, and Division II, we will we'll have reached the halfway point of the regular season. Some drivers returning or coming onto the track there, including last timeouts winner Sadal Soler there in the 30. He took the checkers two weeks ago at Madrid. Josh Drake there in the 66 as well. So this is going to hinder the initial lap time by Alex Benyako having to go to the outside line. But the first official lap time of the session will be a 47.306. We saw in the Division One qualifying session that you're going to want to run somewhere in the 45s in order to be able to make it into round two. I believe it was a 45.880 was the fastest lap that has been set so far this weekend, and that was in round one of Division One by excuse me by Jonathan Zorlin. Benyako already first car to put down a lap time and already down he was down to seventh now out of the top ten is Daniel Voyles right now at the top of the board with a 46.451 but again I don't think that will last long noticed a lot of these uh, drivers in division one were able to turn multiple laps in the 10 minute allotted first round and we had a lot of jostling for position, especially in the bottom five spots in the closing stages of round one, expecting the same here in this one, as there is Sadal Solera. We made reference to him before. Of course, coming in with a win in his back pocket back at Madrid, and that win actually moves Sadal Solera from 36th to 25th in points. And a uh, thing that we talked about before we went off air after the Madrid race was that Sadal Solera needs to make sure now with that win that he stays in the top 30 in points. Well, he jumped up into the top 30 in points. Now he just has to stay there to have that win count towards one of the eight available spots here in Division II in this season's playoff system. Top of the leaderboard right now is the Dodge of O'Neill Balvin. Jesse Turner right behind him, the Toyota and Sadal Solera that we're looking at. Right now third on the charts with a 46.316. As we start getting down to about three minutes, we will be focusing mostly on that 10th position. See if Sadal gets any better lap time here. Dropped to eighth and picked it up. Now back up to fifth as Alex Benyako jumps top of the leaderboard 46.053 we've yet to have anyone hit the 45s though I think we had I want to say six or seven drivers out of the top 10 that transferred into round two of qualifying in division one in the 45 second bracket so we'll see if anyone hits the 45s here I mean I think Ben Yako, if this lap time improves just a little bit I think he might be the first driver to hit the 45s provided he doesn't step out of line on Sadal Solera. Yeah, 
Everything looks good here off this corner. I think he might be able to do it. Let's see if it is going to be a 45 second lap time. No, actually, he was slower. One one hundred slower. His fastest lap was 0.53. He just ran a 0.63. Sadal Solera jumped up to a 0.96. But nobody yet has hit the 45 second bracket. Noticing a driver with some speed here. We haven't really seen him have speed in qualifying. How about our Armory Digital race winner, William Brock, up to third with a 46.144. Caleb Farrell, our Daytona winner, just up ahead of him. And Tristan Allen, who had a bit of a hardship race back at Madrid, dropped down to 13th in points, just up ahead as well. And there's your first 45 second lap time. William Brock, 45.967. So William Brock trying to make a case for himself with just under four minutes remaining in this session to make it into the next round of qualifying. I'm trying to remember, and I'd have to look back real quickly at Division 1. Yes, we have not yet... Oh, wow. Wait, have we? I thought we did. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I guess not. So I'm going to say this with a bit of a, a question mark because I'm not 100% certain. I'm looking as I am trying to figure this out. But I don't think we have ever had, so far this season, a driver win a pole and a race. And as I am looking, our pole sitters have not won a race this season so far in either Division One or Division Two, and that includes the Division One qualifying session earlier today because Patrick Sitch got the pole for the Division One race, and he has not have a win yet this season. So William Brock trying to chase some history here to be the first driver this season to have a race win and a pole win. But now as we start getting down here to about two and a half Minutes remaining, it's start, time to start focusing on who's in and who's just barely hanging on. Right now, William Brock looks like he's going to be in. Got a number of drivers here in the zeros. A nice uh, zero 13 there for Simon Bloomfield in the 21, so he might be in good shape. Tristan Allen, excuse me, with a 37. Uh, just ahead of him, Patrick Smith with a 39. And Daniel Voiles with a 40. Those guys might be okay. Right now, the driver on the hot seat is the 77 of Jesse Turner. Oh, I thought that was him. That was actually Jake Halleck. There's Turner. Wait, no, that's, there's Turner. There he is. I was trying to look for the bright colors. Right now, a 46.097 has him positioned in the 10th spot. Just behind last week's winner, or last time out's winner, I should say, Sadal Solera. I don't think, oh, and Turner just got knocked out. Keith Batson just jumped up to the ninth spot, and that puts last time out's winner Solera in the 10th position. I mean, right now, I would say that uh, O'Neill Balvin, Keith Batson, and Sadal Solera, right now, they are in the hot seat. And Batson and Solera are both in this pack right here, along with Benny Watson, the 34 of Trey Wright. And leading the tail end of this group, Alex Benyako, who right now with a 0-5-3 sits in sixth. Someone just jumped in. It was Simon Solera, just jumped up to fourth. And Vince Almriego just jumped up to ninth. That eliminated both Sadal Solera and Keith Batson. And as soon as I say that, Benny Watson just jumped up to the fourth position. And I believe that just knocked out O'Neill Baldwin. Trey Wright actually moved up as well. He moved up to eight. So who else did that knock out? Oh, that knocked out Almriego. So now it's Caleb Farrell, our Daytona winner, who's on the bubble spot. And Farrell is back in this group, I believe. Nope, next group. I think he was in this group, wasn't he? No, I guess not. There he is. And he just ran his fastest lap with a 46.059. Oh, I'm sorry, no, he ran a 6.9. 100 slower. And they did not count that lap time. I think that lap times are not being counted anymore. Someone just ran a better lap time. I think that might have been Voiles, but he was already in. Maybe it was Watson. Either Farrell ran the exact same lap time or they're not counting lap times anymore. 
Right now, Farrell trying to hang on to that final spot, and I think the session may have come to a close. I don't know if they're counting lap times anymore or not. But if they aren't, then it looks like Farrell's just barely going to get in. Only one one-thousandth behind Simon Soler, who's ninth. Only two thousandths ahead of Almeriego and Samper, who are in a tie for 11th. Let's see if they're counting any of these laps here. And they do! Farrell up to ninth! That puts Simon Soler on the bubble spot. Can anyone make a last ditch effort and knock him out? Where's the four? Simon Solera. There he is. I think the session's over. I think he's I think he made it. I think he got the last spot. Here's Almeriego and Sanfer. They are right now tied for 11th. And it's going to be about maybe 10 seconds on the clock when they come down here, but I think the session is complete. I think Simon Solera is going to get the final spot, and lap times are not counted, so that is it. So Farrell got himself out of the bubble spot, put Simon Solera down there, and if somebody on the lap before had been able to lay down a fast enough lap time, Simon Solera Drivers would have been out within a matter car. of seconds, but he's going to hang on. William Brock, the fastest here in this session, he is going to be the one that... Uh, will be the only one in this round to boast a 45 second lap time. We had about six or seven back in the, the first round of Division One. Simon Bloomfield, he'll be transferring in. He is second, third, Patrick Smith, Tristan Allen, fourth, fifth, Benny Watson. Watson's been qualifying really well last couple of weeks. And then you've got uh, Alex Benyako. He was actually the first car out on track. He'll be transferring in along with Voiles, Wright, Caleb Farrell and Simon Solera. Vince Almeriego is going to get 11th, even though he ties with Charles Sanford with a 46.061. So Sanford will be starting 12th. Baldwin 13th, Batson 14th, Sadal Solera will start 15th. The rest of your top 20 will be Turner, Gamington, Langland, Rowe, and Lopez. Look on down through the remainder of the starting lineup. And as I look at this, a couple of names that kind of stand out to me, in particular, Carson Gum. He comes into this race third in points, and he's going to be starting back in 34th. Nathan Stapleton starting 39th, and he is uh, seventh in the points coming into this race. And also Michael Norman, 33rd, is where he's going to start. And Norman comes into this race top 10 in the points in eighth. So we'll just have to see where these drivers are going to be when the checkered flag waves as they are going to have to do a little bit of work to get up to the front. Don't go anywhere. It's time to find out who's going to be starting on the pole position. I'm going to have to look back. I believe at least, I think it's one of these drivers, maybe two, is a former pole sitter from this season. So don't go anywhere. Round two coming up. So as we get ready here for the second round of qualifying... Uh, we do have a chance here for a first-time thing to happen in uh, Skill Super Speedway Series history on two counts. Number one, so far, in both Division One and Division Two, we have yet to have a two-time pole sitter. Well, 50% of our former pole sitters here from Division Two are in this second round of qualifying. You go back to Armory, race number two. It was, excuse me, Alex Benyako who started on the pole. Race number four at M&M's, Benny Watson started on the pole position, and two weeks ago, our last, or I'm sorry, make that uh, three weeks ago, our race at Dragonette, Simon Solera started on the pole position. So if any one of those three win the pole, they will be the first two-time pole sitter of the season. We're looking here at William Brock. Well, he is a former winner at Armory. Caleb Farrell, who's also in this top ten, he is a former winner at the season opener at Daytona. So if either one of them get the pole, they will be the first driver this season to have a pole and a race win as the 01 SunTrust Chevy is now on the clock. William Brock, who was the fastest in round one of qualifying. And we saw in the Division One round two that it came down to two cars, two car tandeming. To start on the front row, Patrick Zitch was able to claim the pole position. So if we see anybody in the same vicinity as each other, we got to assume they are going to be the ones that will battle for the pole. And it's like William Brock might catch up to Alex Benyako here, so those two might be able to work together. 
We're going to wait here until William Brock lays down a lap time, and then we're going to go through the field, find out where the 10 drivers that transferred here into round two of qualifying, where they come into this race in the points, and it's going to be a 47.223 for William Brock. Might be a little bit faster if he is able to get into the wake of that discount tire Ford of Benyako just up ahead. So, of the drivers that transferred here into this second round of qualifying, the highest in points is Caleb Farrell, second in the standings. Simon Bloomfield is 10th in points coming into this race. Benny Watson, 11th. Uh, William Brock, he is 15th. Trey Wright is 14th. Tristan Allen, 13th. Simon Solera is 21st. Daniel Voyles, he is 22nd. Alex Benyako, 27th. And Patrick Smith, he is the driver struggling the most in points out of those 10. He is 37th. Now well, two drivers in the 46s there. That being Brock and Benyako. Brock with a 896. Benyako with a 950. Only two drivers hit the 46th lap time, second lap times in round two of Division I qualifying. And it looks like we might get the same song second verse here in this one. Brock definitely getting the benefit of the draft off that 20, no doubt about it. This is going to be a much better lap time for him. 46.710. Voiles, 46.862. Let's find the 26, because he might be in someone's draft. Well, maybe not. I don't know how he laid down that lap time with absolutely nobody around him when Brock got his lap time with draft. So if that's the raw speed out of the Jelly Belly Ford, that car is flying but he is about a tenth and a half off of William Brock. Tristan Allen's by himself. Ooh, here might be a sleeper to get his second pole of the season. Simon Solera is in the draft of Patrick Smith. It might come down between Brock and Benyako. Brock lays the gauntlet down, 46, 5, 9, 6. Let's see how Solera answers. Solera trying to get what would be his second pole in three races, and he's going to answer with a 46.685. Not good enough. I think they're going to have one more lap. I'm not certain, though. Smith was actually faster than Solera. 6.39. He's right now second place. Solera back in third. I think Brock's going to get to lay down one more lap. The question is, will Solera be able to? 45 seconds remaining. They had all crossed the line before the time ran out, so I think they're going to count this lap. 5-4-5 five, five for William Brock. Benyako up to second. Now what about this tandem with Smith and Solera? Solera's a ways back behind Smith. I don't think he's going to get as good a lap here as I think he could have. Can he beat a 5-4-5? No, he was slower, a 7-0-4. And that will mean William Brock is going to be starting on the pole. He will be making history as the first driver this season to have a pole win and a race win. And Ben Yako, who also had a pole, kind of ironic, these two actually started pole and win at the same track. It was Armory. Benyako started on the pole. Brock on fuel strategy won the race, and they are no longer counting lap times. This means William Brock is going to be starting on the pole position. Well, Brock, despite his win at Armory, had a couple of races afterwards that weren't all that great. Started slumping a little in the points. He's picked it up last couple of weeks. He's now worked his way back up to 15th, and he will be leading the field to green in our Division Two race here at Pensacola in Drivers, two days' car. time. So Brock will be on the inside of the front row. Ben Yako will be second. At least we had a little bit of a battle for the pole there between Brock and Solera, though it didn't really culminate to much. It will be Patrick Smith and Simon Solera making up row two. Daniel Voyles, that car put down a 46-8 by itself. 
no draft. That is a very good single car lap time. I think Voyles might be one to watch when he's in race trim in a couple of days' time. He'll start fifth alongside of Tristan Allen. Row four is going to be Caleb Farrell, Benny Watson, and Trey Wright, Simon Bloomfield will make up the top ten. Well, that's going to do it here from Pensacola for qualifying. Tomorrow night, it is race seven of Division One for the Skill Super Speedway Series. And then on Sunday evening, it is Division Two's seventh race of the season as we're getting close to the halfway point of the regular season. Hope you'll tune into those races. If you enjoyed tonight's qualifying session, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to Capar the Crew today. William Brock makes history. First driver to have a race win and a pole win here in the Skill Super Speedway Series. And we will see you guys tomorrow night for the points racing here at the weekend of Pensacola. You've been watching a production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.